Greetings. I'm Mert Shane, pastor here at Keoki Chapel, and we pray that you are doing well and that uh, life is treating you well and that you are staying safe. As a part of our continuation of Black History Month celebration, I want to draw your attention to uh, Sally A. Crenshaw, who lived from 1900 until 1986. She was a licensed missionary uh, preacher in the 1930s uh, because of prohibition of uh, prohibiting the ordination of women. She did not become a uh, pastor uh, and was not ordained until 1958, in which case she was the uh, one of two of the first black women ordained in the Methodist Episcopal Church. And so we recognize her accomplishments and her ministry as we celebrate Black History Month. And now let us begin with our call to worship. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord, that He may teach us His ways, and that we may walk in His paths. And that's from Isaiah chapter 2. Let us pray. Almighty God, your blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as we know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. For our children's sermon today, we reckon I ask you, what is your favorite color? Well, look around you, behind me and at me, in terms of the church's color today. You'll notice that it's purple. And what does purple mean to the church today? Well, purple is a sign of Lent. That is a time of preparation. Purple is also a color of royalty. And many times kings and queens would wear their robes in purple as a recognition of royalty. And so that's why the church is decorated in purple and will be all throughout Lent as we celebrate these 40 days uh, of Lent. As we recognize the colors and the season of preparation, we recognize how God touched Jesus and how He was instrumental in our lives. And so let us pray. Dear God, today we give special thanks for purple, the color of royalty, the color that reminds us of preparation. So help us as we recognize these colors, and we thank you for our King Jesus. Amen. And so this being the first Sunday of Lent, we want to recognize all that is about us um, as we go through this season. And so this season we will start with recognizing the baptism of Jesus. And so let us pray. out to us in love. 
even when we do not deserve it. As you guided Noah and his family through the flood to safety and dry land, so we ask for your guidance today. Lead those who are feeling overwhelmed as they feel the floodwaters surrounding them, the problems in their relationships, in their finances, with their health and with their jobs. Remind us again and again to look for your rainbow amid the clouds of life and to follow as you led us to safety. We give you thanks, God, of our mothers and fathers, for all who have gone before us in the faith. We often forget the sacrifices they made and the troubles they endured. We thank you for the freedoms they secured for us. We pray for those whose struggle continues, for those tempted to exchange principle for quick fixes, for those whose faith is subject to ridicule, for those who are treated unjustly, for those who live in dangerous places. We especially lift up those that are struggling with power and the storms in the state of Texas and areas, and all over the country dealing with these storms. Bless them in a special way as they are in need of power and water and the essentials in life. We pray for the workers trying to help others, for all of our essential workers, those that sacrifice for our common good. Faithful God, the psalmist wrote, how your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep your covenant. And yet that is exactly what we have trouble doing, keeping your covenant. Forgive us when we go our own way and forget your law of love. Help us to be open to the voice of your Holy Spirit within us as it directs our steps in life. As you are willing again and again to call us back to the way of love and rebuild the trust in our relationship, help us to be willing to take the beginning steps of rebuilding trust in relationships that will glorify and honor you. We pray for those that are sick and struggling. We lift up our members, Pat and her recovery and Paul. Guide and direct them as well as the other members of our congregation and our congregation at large. We pray these and other prayers in your son Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Gloria, for playing Wade in the Water, an old African-American spiritual.
as it addresses baptism. As we give thanks today, we thank you for helping in the support of our missions. And so we ask a special uh, blessing on those of you that are contributing to the relief of uh, those in need, especially uh, contributions to UMCOR, that is our United Methodist Commission on Relief. We know that they are in the midst of helping people in the midst of the storms, and so we give thanks for them, and thanks for your contributions to that ministry so that we can continue supporting those in need. So, thanks, and let us pray. You, O oh Lord, are the author and giver of all good things. Today we bring our gifts, our talents, and our very lives to you this day, asking you to bless them to be used in places where new life is needed. Make our Lenten disciples disciplines, ones of joy and sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our Gospel lesson today is Mark uh, 9. Chapter 1, verse 9 through 15. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended to him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for this opportunity to worship you. Bless us and bless the reading of the scripture that it may enlighten us this day and let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight O oh god for you are our strength and our redeemer amen today's scripture is taken from the book of psalm chapter 25 verses 1 through 10. to you O oh lord I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O oh my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, and my rebellious ways, according to your love, remember me, for you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways, he guides the humble in what is right, and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. 
May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. In the scriptures in Mark, they talk about the baptism of Jesus and the voice from heaven, you are my son, whom I dearly love, and you I find happiness. Now it's written in numerous different ways, but the same focus is there. That is, God speaking and sending the angels to watch over Jesus, and that Jesus is doing the right thing by being baptized. Just like we are baptized. Because baptism is more than just a ritual. It's more than just uh, going through the motions. It's a matter of recognizing God's love. Recognizing that God is blessing us because we are following in God's paths. You see, God's love for Jesus is the same as God's love for us. I should really quit there. Because that says it all. He loved Jesus as His only Son, and He also loves us as individuals, as His children. See, too often we find ourselves in baptismal situations. Typically we baptize the infants and the parents go through a process of, of actually say, stating that they are going to be supportive of the child and raise the child uh, in a religious way men. At the same time, the congregation takes an oath indicating that they are going to support and help raise the child. And it doesn't make any difference what age the child is, if it's infant or an adult. We still are making that same commitment. But recognize that Baptism is not like a shield, it's not like a vaccine that totally protects the child. As many people think that, well, I have to get my child baptized so that they will be protected. That's not really the case. They are protected just like Jesus was protected and have to endure and deal with the same things. You see, Jesus was inaugurated into this life of suffering, just like we are, that dying and rising. That's what happens to us. Because we have to deal with our own wilderness situations. We have to deal with all of the beasts of the world. Whether it be the beast of power, the beast of control, the beast of all the isms. That's what Jesus endured. And that's what we also must endure. And so, baptism is a call to resist evil in whatever form it presents itself. Whether it be sexism or narcissism or arrogance or greed or poverty, or oppression, abuse of power, apathy, anti-Semitism, or racism. They are all forms of evil that we have to contend with. Now many times what happens is people just don't want to deal with the problem. They won't want to face it. They won't want to address it. As I have pointed out on numerous occasions, how my life has been affected by many of the isms. And so we have to address the issues together as God's people. 
so that we find strength in our numbers of coming together to battle the isms. How often have I addressed the issue of racism and how many discussions have we had relative to that? How many times people blow off the issue because they just don't want to talk about it. And I get concerned that they're not talking about it with me, nor are they talking about it in their own families and amongst their friends. So that we can dismantle those isms. Are you courageous enough? Are you supported enough? so that you can truly address the issues? Are you just going to be a part of the problem and not address the solutions? Just as God sent angels to care for Jesus, God also does that for us. That we are supported from beginning of life to the end. That we are a part of God's family and so we need the support. Oh yes, there are numerous uh, accounts of angels. You'll notice the angel behind me and recognize the statement of the dove, the gentleness, the calming that they represent in our lives and how we are in need of being guided by God's messengers. This chapter in Psalm is a means of praise and petition in prayer. Asking God for God's help and instruction so that we can carry on and be the best that we can be. To be God's humble servants. So that when we face these beasts, if you will, that we can address it knowing that God is on our side. That we are being lifted up and strengthened so that we can address the issues. And so the psalm is asking for instruction. Teach us, O oh God, so that we know how to properly live so that we can be constructive citizens in your world, addressing those that are in need, whether they be poverty, or hungry, or loneliness, or homelessness, that we can help address those. During the season of Lent, a lot of folks give up things think that they have to sacrifice those items. But I challenge you, instead of giving up, how about you give of yourself? Whether that be in communicating with loved ones, whether it be communicating with other church members or those that are struggling or in need, or maybe giving of your time and food pantries and and other causes where people are in need of help. Maybe it's volunteering at the hospital or uh, in the vaccine shelters and in the testing places. There's room for all of us to give a helping hand of some type. Maybe you need to do that in writing. Maybe you need to do it in phone calls. Maybe you need to do it in person but you have the ability with all the gifts that God has given you to do what is right. So I challenge you, don't give up. Give of yourself for the good of us all. Let us pray. God of grace, whose spirit descended like a dove upon Jesus at his baptism, whose voice spoke from the heavens and called him beloved, whose spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness for 40 days where he was tempted by Satan and lived among the wild animals. 
Help us comprehend with our whole selves that your Spirit has been poured out upon us, that we are your beloved children, and that you send us into the wilderness of this world where we, too, are tempted by evil and confronted by the beast of the 21st century. Give us courage to persevere and grant us faith to believe that we can count upon your angels to be our host. We pray through Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And so now, beloved of God, go to your neighbor in peace. Go into the wilderness where God sends you. Go in the knowledge that when you encounter trials and temptations, God's angels will care for you. Go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit both now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Stay safe. Be in good health. Take care of yourself and others, now and always. Amen. <laughs>